Let's talk some chess. This is game eight of the World Chess Championship. Jan Napomachi with the black pieces, Ding Liren with the white pieces. Jan is up one point going into this game, and Ding is looking to equalize with the white pieces. And this is just an awesome game. Twists and turns, some crazy stuff happens. I won't give it away, but just sit back, relax, and enjoy. We have Ding kicking it off with d4, knight to f6, uh, c4, uh, e6, knight to c3, and then the bishop is brought to b4, so deep into white's position and pinning the knight to the king. e3 supports the uh, pawns in the center, and Nepo uh, ties the rate for ties the record for castling with four moves. He gets out his pawn and his bishop, his knight, and castles his king to safety on the king's side already. Ding says, I want this bishop out of my face, and he plays a3, and Jan says, okay, I will trade and mess up your pawn structure here on the c file. Uh, then Jan plays d6, we have knight to e2 by Ding, and then uh, c5 challenging this nice sort of conglomerate of pawns in the center for white. Ding brings his knight to g3, we have knight to c6, and then this really, I, I still can't make sense of this move, rook to a2, I guess controlling the second rank here. Uh, the computer is fine with this move, so I guess we're going to have to b2, but certainly a move that you maybe don't often see, you know, every day in this in this type of position. Jan responds with b6, adding some support to his c5 pawn, and Ding pushes again in the center, so now he has this sort of nice pawn structure, minus the, you know, the stacked pawn on the c file, so uh, he has this pawn on e4. And now we have bishop to a5, so now the bishop is attacking this relatively weak c4 pawn. It's currently defended by Ding's bishop, but if that bishop ever moves, then Jan will happily gobble it up, and that even comes with a free attack on the rook, so... Not a bad idea for Jan. Uh, Ding jumps into uh, sort of an attack with bishop to g5. This obviously pins the knight to the queen. And uh, Jan says, get that bishop out of my face. But Ding actually sort of makes the first cool-looking, not a really surprising move, but cool-looking move of the game. He just plays h4 and seemingly sacrifices the bishop to the pawn. But the problem is, is this cannot be taken. So if you took, then you get pawn takes back. And now you've just opened up a beautiful h-file attack for your rook, and the queen is also coming into the picture. So I, this is actually, this is what happened. Um, I guess what I meant to say is, you can take the bishop, but you cannot save your knight. So if the knight, you know, tries to move, let's say the knight moves to h7, then you get queen to h5, and now this is a pretty brutal position for black to try to defend. Obviously, you're threatening queen takes on knight h7. Ugh. Queen takes knight on h7 with checkmate, so I think the only way to avoid this is just by playing f6, but then, you know, this this doesn't look like a fun position at all um, for black. So uh, instead of trying to protect the knight, Jan just plays uh, g6, and now Ding uh, just takes the pawn on f6. This idea behind g6 was to take away the h5 square from Ding's king coming into the game and, and joining, sorry, Ding's queen coming into the game and joining the attack on the h file. So uh, again, this, you know, seemingly bishop sacrifice by Ding, not really a sacrifice, just a trading of material because the knight is is trapped. So takes back. And the queen, uh, Jan's queen, immediately gets rid of that nasty f6 pawn um, and uh, develops in the process. But now Ding has this e5 move. Obviously, this threatens the queen. So uh, Jan takes it off the board, and Ding plays d5. And this comes with an attack on the knight. You know, you can play E captures D5, but then you just get the same uh, C captures on D5, and then you have this passed pawn. Instead of taking back with the pawn, Jan just retreated his knight to E7, and Ding played D6. So now, again, an attack on the knight, um, and Jan brings his knight to F5, and now we have a very nice passed pawn for Ding, just two moves away from promotion. And the promotion square is triple guarded as of now, but obviously Jan will have to be careful about not giving up a queen in his own territory. So Ding starts by adding some, some more, ugh, adding some, some more support, adding some more support to his passed pawn with knight to e4. This also comes with an attack on the queen, so Jan moves it away, brings the queen to d8, and then Ding develops his own queen to d3. We then have Jan bringing his king to g7, so getting his king a little bit safer, allowing the rook to kind of roam on the eighth rank. Uh, and Ding just continues to put the pressure on with g4. So this obviously comes with an attack on the knight, 
you uh, don't want to lose the knight, it would seem, but Jan actually says, okay, you can, you know, just like we saw Ding ignore a, a pawn attacking a bishop on the g-file, so does Jan, and he brings his bishop to uh, b7. And uh, what's, what's the idea here? Well, Ding plays uh, rook to h3. He actually just ignores that he has, uh, you know, he can take this knight with the pawn because he, he really can't. So if you, if you do take this knight with the pawn, then you just are gonna get uh, pawn takes back. And now the pawn is attacking the knight, but the knight is pinned by the bishop to the rook. So if the knight moves away, I don't know, let's put it here, then you get bishop takes rook on h1. You're down the exchange and, and this position will fall apart quickly for white. So you can't, that's all to say you can't take the uh, knight with the pawn. So instead, uh, Ding just puts his, puts his rook on um, h3. This breaks the pin, so the knight is free to move. And it also, now these, you know, the rook and the, the queen is nice, are nicely connected. And now Ding owns the second rank and he owns the third rank. So that's, you yeah, know, that's, that's definitely good. Good for him. Um, now Jan uh, saves his knight. So the knight was definitely being threatened to be taken on f5. So he brings his knight to h4. And here uh, Ding just pushes onward with a g5. The other idea, in addition to sort of blocking these, king, these squares off for the king, is that um, the knight previously was defended by the queen, so Yan, sorry, Ding could not take uh, this this knight because the queen would just take back. But now with g5, you can you are threatening to take this knight, and the queen can't take the pawn because of knight takes. So this is a nice little maneuver to block the defense of the knight and you know threaten to take it. And here Yan makes his big mistake of the game. He plays uh, bishop takes on e4, and the problem is he needed to play. Uh, rook to h8 and add some defense to this lonely knight out here. The the uh, uh, problem with this uh, bishop to e4 is that you get queen takes back on e4 and now there's a double defense on this knight and the knight doesn't really have any good squares to go to, which which we'll see. So after this move, Jan was just kind of distraught, sitting, not looking very happy, and now this is a very winning position for Ding, as we're going to see. So Jan does try to save his knight. Um, it can't move, obviously, to g3 or, uh, sorry, um, f3 or g2. So instead it moves, because it would be taken by the queen or the bishop. So instead it moves to uh, f5, where it's protected by the pawn. But now you get uh, the correct move in this position, which is rook to d2, adding some support to this passed pawn. And you can't take the pawn here with the knight. It looks like you can, because the knight is defended by the queen. But then you would get this uh, queen takes on e5 check and the position is gonna fall apart quickly for white. Um, you know, you can't retreat to the eighth rank with the king because this is checkmate, so you really have to block with the pawn, and then, you know, this just this just looks terrible for um, black. At the very least, you're gonna win the knight back, you know, because two pieces are attacking it, but it just doesn't, doesn't look good. So you can't take the pawn back, so instead, uh, Jan puts his rook on h8, trying to challenge Ding's supremacy of the h-file, and Ding says, I'm happy to trade, I have a winning, a better position, Let's get some rooks off the board. So we have takes takes on h8, and Ding just pushes his uh, his pawn mercilessly towards uh, uh, you know on d7. And now you know this is also a nice move because the queen now is really threatening to take this rook. Let's say we have some silly move here. Um, then queen takes queen takes and uh, bringing up a queen is a threat. So because then obviously if the queen takes back, the rook would take, and this is this is winning very much winning for white. So that's that's a threat. So instead you know. To deal with that, Jan uh, uh, moves his rook out of harm's way and gets it behind the pass pawn, or in front of the pass pawn, as it were, on d8. But now you have this check that Ding has sort of been threatening all along, which is queen takes on e5 with check. The king does not have that many squares to move to, um, and in this case he moves to the h-file. But this is an, a very awkward square for the king. Um, you know, it's the, the queen is behind it. It does open up an attack on uh, Ding's queen, which is undefended, so maybe that's but, but I'm not sure. I, I, I guess this makes the most sense to put the king on the h file. Um, but now you get Ding just playing queen to h2 check, and here we have a couple of repeated moves. King moves back, queen moves back, king moves back, queen moves back, and then the queen finally moves to uh, c7. And, you know, Ding has had some time trouble in this match, so I think he sort of just wanted to get closer to time control by sort of playing those moves. And now he finds himself here in a really, really winning position, the queen is threatening this rook. You know, if the black queen ever moves, the black queen is basically now pinned um, to the uh, eighth rank because it can't leave the defense of this rook. 
and uh, yeah, there's just is much a much better position for white. There's a lot of things I'm probably not seeing all of them, but you know, queen is threatening to gobble up these pawns. The queen is sort of threatening this rook. Maybe there's even some queen c8 action. I don't know, but this is just a way better position for white. Here, the correct move to play if you're black is uh, if you're playing with black pieces is queen to f8. Um, but Jan actually played uh, uh, a Hail Mary move, I think I saw it called on chess.com. Um, a bluff is another thing I, I saw it called. Uh, so take a second and see if you can, you know, think about what Jan played in this, in this position. Okay, uh, so Jan didn't really play a chess move, he played a world championship move. And what I mean by that is Jan played the move queen to h4. And this is a, what I mean by all that is this is a, this is a crazy looking move because it, aban it abandons the defense of the rook. So the queen is blocked by the pawn on g5. So, you know, let's say it, it looks like Jan is just giving up his rook on, on d8. So Ding sits here and Jan has just made this queen to h4 move and Ding's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? There must be a reason why Jan just let go of this rook he must have a scary attack in mind and Ding sat and thought and calculated. And in the end, what's crazy is that Ding was so you know nervous about this move that instead of taking this free rook on d8, he played king to d1. And what's even crazier is that you know we don't know if Jan was truly bluffing, but this is not a legitimate threat. We're gonna go through the line in a second. This queen to h4 is not a legitimate threat. This was, you know, for all intents and purposes, a bluff. Jan looks like he's going on the attack, but he doesn't have a legitimate attack. Ding can take the, this rook and be totally fine. But because of the pressure, because he's, you know, Ding's playing a great attacker, he was so worried that he gave up the free rook and played king to d1 and got back to an equal position. So let's look at what actually happens if Ding does take the rook. So he takes the rook, essentially takes his own queen out of the game. Um, it's now blocked by the pawn. And now Jan has sort of, uh, you know, open season on white's king. So first you play queen to e4. You can't play king to d1 because then you get... Uh, queen to b1, and then you would just repeat, and this would be a, uh, a draw. So instead, uh, you know, you, let me just make a couple more moves. You're going to repeat, and this this will this will be a draw. So instead, uh, you have to block with the rook, and then you get queen to b1. King has to go to d2. Queen comes to b2, and now if you don't want to repeat moves, you have to walk up the board with king to d3. But then you get this queen to b1 check, and the king can't you know escape to the I guess the uh, queen side. Um, you have to block here with the rook, and now queen takes the bishop on f1 with check. Now it's getting a little bit hot in the kitchen, right? Because uh, you just lost a bishop, the queen is attacking, the knight is ready to jump in, the pawn is here, so this is a little bit scary for, uh, for white. So here you uh, kind of have to play king to d2. You don't want to walk up the board. I think this, yeah, there must be some checkmate here if you do that. Oh, so uh, you, you retreat to d2, and now the correct move to continue the attack is knight to d6. And uh, this doesn't look like it, it does much, but uh, if white made some silly move here, like a4, then knight to c4 is checkmate. The knight is checking the king, the queen is slicing this way and this way, and the rook and pawn are blocking the king's escape. So this would be this would be checkmate. And a, a, I don't know how you would stop this checkmate. Uh, one sec. The nice thing is that, uh, or maybe not nice because Ding didn't see it, but Ding has a way out. If Ding plays queen to f6, then you have to move the king, doesn't really matter where. So you move it to g8. King, queen to h8, this queen sacrifice forces the king to take, and then you get to bring up another queen with your pawn. This is obviously check, Comes you know, the, the queen comes up with check, king moves, queen takes the knight, and this is totally, totally winning for Ding. So, certainly a scary attack, but it would peter out, it wouldn't work. But unfortunately, you know, maybe it was the time pressure, maybe it was the pressure of the stage, knowing that Jan's a great attacker. Ding didn't see this, and Ding just made the safe move. So going all the way back to after Jan plays, uh, after Jan plays h4, queen to h4, instead of taking the bishop, Jan just moves his king to safety. Sorry, Ding moves his king to safety on d1, and now there's no productive checks from the queen. But the problem is, is that now Jan can take the pawn on g5, connect his rook and queen, and the rook is protected, and the position is is basically equal now. So that was a just a crazy switch, a, a bluff, if that's what Jan meant, but it, it certainly worked. And now we just, you know, they played a, a couple more moves, king to c2, we have queen to e7, bishop finally develops uh, to g2. 
pawn uh, e5, bishop comes to e4, attacking the knight. Knight retreats to h h6. Queen starts to gobble up some pawns on the a-file. The knight comes to uh, g4, threatening the pawn. And here, Ding could have kind of gotten back in the game with bishop to c6, just really overprotecting this passed pawn, but instead he played bishop to f4, uh, f3, attacking the knight. We have knight takes on f2, uh, rook takes. Um, uh, Jan pushes his pawn to e4. Ding pins the pawn to the queen with rook to e2. Uh, Jan plays f5. We have queen takes on b6. Rook takes the passed pawn. Queen goes to a8. a Jan offers a queen trade on d6. Ding accepts. We have uh, Jan trades the, or Ding trades the bishop for two passed pawns. Uh, king advances. Uh, Ding brings his, his rook to e8. And, this, and in this position, the two players agree to a draw because this is a drawn endgame. White has three pawns, but you know these two pawns are basically one pawn. They're not helping each other. And black has two pawns, and this this is a draw. So just a crazy, crazy game. You know, really interesting creative attack. Um, and I think the critical moment of the game was Jan playing uh, bluff that uh, that worked and caused Ding to play the safe move and um, not continue with his crushing attack. But you know, really fun. This has been a great match. I both players are playing great. Wish the best to both of them and. You know, stay stay tuned to the World Championship, and thanks for watching. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, and we'll see you next time.